Anne Dominey. I'm a Green Party volunteer and today I'm talking to Sonia Francis, who is a councillor with the Tame Town Council. And Sonia is the first and only Green councillor with Tame and she's been there for just over a year. So nice to have you with us, Sonia. Thank you very much. It's lovely to be here. So if I could start by asking you what you're working on at the moment on the Town Council. The big thing at the moment is our green living plan. Uh, this has been five years in the making at least with a, a local group of um, RSA members and volunteers to produce a green living plan for TAME which will feed into our um, neighbourhood plan. We've already got a neighbourhood plan. We, we were tamed as the first to have a neighbourhood plan, but it's out of date, it has to be revised. So this green living plan, which is about uh, cycling and traveling, clean air, um, biodiversity, everything to do with uh, water, all sorts of things to do with how tame is going to be sustainable in the future if you like and this has just been adopted by the tame town council we voted on it actually a week ago um it's it's all there it's about to be published it's with the designer to do lots of you know, nice little pictures and uh, graphs and things so that's very exciting so the next step what we're doing now is getting a team of people together with some councillors and some other volunteers and some of the experts who produced the, the plan to actually form an action group to actually take the plan forward with with actions which is going to be the exciting stage so um, we will get local people to to help with that so if, if we're doing say um, you know solar solar power on roofs a scheme for that or cycling routes you know different people in the community can come along and join that particular sort of subgroup but it will all be um, financed and overseen by the by Tame Town Council because we're the sort of the authority, the responsible authority with that will manage the funding. But we will at some point we can speak and constitute ourselves into some sort of um, organisation, a community group or something where we can actually apply for funding. Because as a Tame Town Council, you can't apply for funding and grants from different places, you know, like lottery funds and things. So the Green Living Group will become some sort of community company, you know, without guarantee or whatever the term is, so that all we can apply for funding from outside bodies. So it's very exciting, and um, but it, and we need to get the keep the impetus going because it's gr great to have these plans and it looks beautiful on paper but actually starting to move things because, you know, there is a climate emergency. Um, <laughs> we need to get on with things as quickly as we can. So, um, yeah, that's where we are with that. And the first thing we're looking at is a thing called solar streets, which Henley actually is a little bit further in front of us, where people in a street or as long as they live close together in a town, all agree to have solar panels put on their roofs. And as a result, you get a big reduction in the cost because obviously it's cheaper for them to send one surveyor out to one small area and to, to sort of installers can work in one area. And then each for each household that takes up the scheme, the community gets five hundred pounds. So is it five hundred or fifty? Oh, can't remember. But they get some of money to go into a community pot to spend on other community projects. So that's something that we're looking into right now as, as maybe being our first our first little project to get going. Um, yeah, so that's what we're working on at the moment. That sounds really exciting. And if local people want to get involved in those schemes, how can they do that? They can at the moment they can go onto the website called um, the Tame Green Living Plan or on the Tame Council website. There's a link there to that website and you can um, there you can register your interest but we, we will be later on very soon sending out you know call to action to to sort of publicize what we're doing and, and invite people to, uh, to to get involved but at, at the moment yeah if anyone wants to go find out more about the green living plan and whatever their expertise you know we'll be we'll be very happy to, to sort of get get them on board especially a bit later on when we got these subgroups into different areas like the cycling or the clean air or or energy you know whatever it is yeah so that's that's the best route at the moment and how have you found it working with other parties on the council 
Um, at first, challenging, <laughs> I have to say. I think, you know, they thought, oh, there's this new person coming along, you know, who wants to, because I wanted to the council to declare a, a climate emergency, which loads of other councils around the country have done. And uh, that was one of the first things I pushed for. And I think I've learned the lesson. I was a bit too quick and a bit pushy, not getting people on board with me. And they didn't declare um, a climate emergency. But what they did do, they had a, an environment policy that they were working on and had been working on, which sort of ground to a halt, really, to be honest, because other emergencies and other things were that councillors had to attend to arrived on the scene. But we've now got that through. So the council does actually have an environment policy, which is it's not it's not as good as I would like it to be, but it's it's pretty good. I think you know most town councils wouldn't have anything better. But I think they thought because they had this green living plan in the pipeline, they didn't have to have another policy. Um, but uh, you know that it's that's a living document which can be changed as we go along. But as time's gone on, um, I think I've lowered my expectations for things to happen quickly. <laughs> and they've got to know me a bit more, you know, where I come from. And um, we, we, we work a lot better now than we did, we did at first. We, we, we have, the problem is we had a couple of people on the council who actually kind of didn't agree there was any climate emergency really, and that there was much we could do locally. You know, they, they said things like, oh, you know, go and talk to China, you know, and all this sort of thing. But I think there's so much publicity around this now. People are talking about it and they're beginning, they have realised that actually locally we can do things. And all of them, it was voted for unanimously, the Green Living Plan, so all of them are now on board with that. It's just the challenge is going to be to get things happening in a timely manner, because when you've got people with different ideas, it sometimes slows things down. You know, people are very cautious about committing to time scales, and I understand that because you know you can turn around and say to a town council, "Well, you promised we'd have cycle tracks by you know in a year, and we haven't." Sort of thing. I can understand that, but I, I just hope that we don't lose the impetus and that the local people will get behind it and we can really get on with the actions because that's why I wanted to be a councillor to get things done. I, I I don't want to sort of sit around talking about things you know so um i th i think tame town council all in all generally are um really proactive in, in looking at the future and the sustainability of the town um so i think it's i think we're very lucky actually with tame um that my next challenge which i also tried to get going too quickly i guess was to persuade them to divest from some of their investments which are in fossil fuels and a few other nasty things so that's my next challenge but with covid and stock you know the stock exchange and, and share prices and the economy everything's really uncertain so that they've been a bit nervous about doing anything about that but that's something we will be looking at in the future that's my next big challenge but i realize i i can't push these things you know i have to sort of take my time and carry people with me and get evidence you know you have to get evidence that divesting in green things doesn't mean you, you get less return for your money. You know, in fact, the opposite is happening at the moment. In all the um, financial press, everybody's saying that green investments and that sort of thing are actually, the returns financially are bigger in many cases or equal to um, non-green um, you know, investments. So that's, yeah, that's my next challenge. <laughs> do you feel that you've got a lot of support from local people when you're pushing for these green issues i do i think the low the local the people i think really want to see things happen I, yeah i really do um but it's it's carrying the councillors with you um but i think once they realize for instance when we try to get the council to um to to do an uh, um, climate emergency the town hall was absolutely packed absolutely packed and people were cheering the speakers and when they didn't declare it they were booing there was a massive interest and we just had our carnival which was featured on saving the planet so you know we know that people locally want to get these things done but people need guidance you know people are 
people i think they're looking to the local authorities and councillors and people in authority now for, for what they can do you know so much you can do individually like you know not buy plastic bags and limit you know what you buy wrapped in plastic There's lots of things you can do individually but i think people now have got to the point where they want guidance and leadership and i think this is where tame town council can can really help once they see we've got these policies and and that their representatives are going along with these policies you know they'll, they'll come along with us i hope so anyway but that's a feeling i get yeah so what can people do if they do support these policies and they want to support your work as a councillor is there anything that well, local people can do they, to help you they can write if they write to the council and say you know they are concerned about too many cars in the town centre you know uh, they are concerned that they don't feel safe cycling with their children into the town centre you know please write to the council address it to the clerk and then because then if we know that people are people want these things to happen that they are struggling um you know that that gives the council information that yeah actually this is what people want this is what we need to do but if the council don't know these things people people are facing these challenges they won't go along with anything you know i suggest um but so they, there are councillors on there who have been you know, very instrumental in, in in supporting me um at first i felt very lonely i have to say i did feel very lonely because even i'm not going to mention parties but people that i would have expected to support me um, were a bit slow in supporting me but um I feel that's slowly changing. Uh, we, we're actually forming a um, open spaces working group because I'm trying to stop the council mowing the verges. It's <laughs> another thing where there was reluctance, you know, to do that. But I've managed to get this working group that's going to start up again, which was moribund on the council, and we're going to be looking at the verges and increasing biodiversity in the town. So that's that's another thing. Another challenge that we're just starting on on now so yeah so there's all sorts of things going on in tame that uh, you know we are starting to move on and bringing people with us and we've actually had two letters from people from the public saying why do you cut all the lovely flowers down you know um but uh it's difficult to make change when people are used to that their job is making the town look neat and tidy you know because that's what cutting the verges is to get the mindset change no it's not all about tidiness we've got to start thinking differently so that's where you need to sort of educate people and say well actually it can look nice and you know or maybe if you just leave say 18 inches at the back of the verge uncut and you just cut cut the front because i understand for visibility on some roads you have to cut back the vegetation to enable the cars to see around a bend i understand all that but it's yeah it's just trying to make people think differently now that it's not about having a nice tidy world you know neat edges and neat grass and grass is like a monoculture really there's not much in there so yeah so that's another challenge we face <laughs> in, locally you mentioned being a bit lonely on the council i suppose something that would help you is if we could get more green councillors elected so you want oh, to them. It, it'd be wonderful it would so be somebody wonderful. was thinking about standing to be a councillor what advice would you give them do it honestly um I, d I didn't expect to get um elected i have to say we're a very blue it's a very blue area team and and you know conservative and the rest of it i didn't expect to get to get voted in and when it actually happened i thought oh my you know what have i done ah! but actually once you're there you realize you can actually influence people sometimes it's very slow and very subtle but you can influence what happens even if there's just one of you in the room you know there's a saying isn't there a green in the room can, can make things happen and if there's two of you brilliant you now that's even more so i would say please do stand we haven't got local elections in tame now for another almost three years because every four years we vote for the, the new town councillors but you know should a vacancy arise i mean you know please and there's a couple of people i know in tame actually who i think i can convince to stand <laughs> but obviously the more they see happening as regards green things the more likely perhaps they are to think oh actually you know i will stand 
Um, so yeah, that'd be it'd be lovely to have, have two of us. Yeah, but we got district council uh, did really well, didn't they, in the elections with green councillors? So we've got lots of lovely green councillors on the district council. So I get a lot of support from them actually. I must say. I find that the, you know, the Green Party and the Green Councillors at District and the one at um, in County, you, you get a lot of support from, a lot of good ideas and we support each other, which is what's really nice about the Green Party, I have to say. Yeah, so it's not quite so isolated as literally being the only oh, one. Oh no, You've got no, no, no. colleagues no. elsewhere yeah. in the Absolutely, yeah. yes, yes. And we've been having lots of discussions around the local plan inspection, which you know is currently going on at the moment, which is extremely deficient in anything to do with climate change so uh, we've been having lots of discussions about that and supporting each other about how we should present our evidence to the inspector and, and things like that so it's been very interesting times and i think the bigger authorities are moving towards a much more um, you know sustainable future for oxfordshire whether it's at town district or, or county county level we could do some more at county i think we've got one at the moment haven't we um yeah yeah so it's all very exciting and uh, lots going on very very busy i'm supposed to be retired but i've never been busier in my life <laughs> everyone says that when they retire don't they but, but you know if you if you if you get elected to a council you you've got your work you can put in as much as you want you can put in as much as you want to be honest you know i mean there are people who sit back and don't get involved in anything and just come to meetings and there are a few of us who are on everything, you know, where we think we can make a difference. So yeah, hard, we need hardworking people who are, you know, want to get on with things to stand. <laughs> well, thank you very much. That's been really interesting. It was really nice to talk to you. It was absolute pleasure, Anne. Thank you. <laughs>